Psycho, come on! It's one game! One measly game out of 82 where the Vancouver Canucks got themselves a point. Why can't you look at that game and just be like, great! Why do you have to make a crazy video like this? And the reason I'm making a crazy, over-the-top, exaggerated title thumbnail video like this is because... I do think that the existence of this conversation isn't rooted in lunacy. I think there's a very real conversation that has started in different parts of social media that goes over the Vancouver Canucks top paid player and superstar and whether or not we could actually see Elias Pedersen as a legitimate disappointment. Now, this is all a huge, wild, crazy overreaction to what we had seen in Game 1 of the season. Vancouver lost 6-5 to in overtime. In a game where they had separate three-goal leads, they were up 3-0, then they were up 4-1. to The Vancouver Canucks let this game slip away from their fingers, and Ilias Pedersen actually scored himself a point. He had an assist on the Brock Besser goal, the first one. PD over to DeBrusque, cross crease in front out to Brock. Beautiful play. That's PD's first point on the year. Him and DeBrusque had a lot of chemistry in the preseason. They were setting up goals left, right, and center. But I feel like the biggest sentiment coming out of that Vancouver Calgary game on Wednesday was that Elias Pettersson needs to be better. And this actually isn't a sentiment that I held personally, partly because I did miss a good chunk of the overtime period. As you know, I was in Vegas for most of the week, so I was kind of out and about doing other things. But Elias Pettersson was the guy getting most of the flack, I would say, from Canucks fans after the game. It was him and goaltender Artur Shilovs. Shilovs we can give a little bit more of a pass to because he is a bit younger, and he is, of course, a goaltender playing the most difficult position in the sport. And you could also debate that the Vancouver Canucks defense didn't really help Shilovs much either. But all Artur Shilovs lets in too many long shots talk aside, I wanted to go over the PD conversation because I actually did think think, just from my own personal point of view, that Elias Pettersson was okay in the game against Calgary. He didn't dangle the pants off of anybody. He didn't make any beautiful highlight reel plays. The assist that he had was a regular old tic-tac-toe pass where he started everything off. Great, an assist is an assist, but I actually was really impressed by Elias Pettersson's hustle. Off the puck, I liked his defensive awareness, I liked what he was doing in the back check, I liked his takeaway game. As I said, I missed the majority of the overtime, and by the time I turned my computer stream back on, the Connor Zary goal had already gone in, so I didn't really see much of Elias Pettersson's faults in the OT. But for me personally, I walked away out of this Calgary game thinking, hey, PD wasn't that bad. And I think for a game like this, to kick things off, it's game one of 82, he gets a point, the team loses, they blow a lead, which is not great. You saw guys step up like crazy, Miller, Hughes, lots of good performances out of them. You would prefer to see Petey step up too, but I thought that his game was alright to the point that I was saying, okay, he wasn't a liability in this one. But it turns out that my perspective was not seen by many other Canucks fans in the same way. I saw too many social media posts talking about how Elias Pettersson is a bum. I saw a lot of friends online talking about how Pettersson was disappointing, this and that. And while I will say that there are nuances to these things, I don't want to make it seem like Pettersson had a bad game, but I think it is very fair to say that he had a disappointing game. They're not the same thing and a lot of the differentiation comes with expectations, because Elias Pettersson is the most expensive player on the team. He's making $11.6 million a year. This is the first year of that contract. If there is anybody that is supposed to step up in a game like the Calgary game, where the team was up with a three-goal lead twice and they blew it, if there was anybody that should be able to be the leading force in weathering that storm, it should be Elias Pettersson. I will say, there was one play in particular that stood out to me while watching the game that I did not like out of PD, it was where he had the wide open chance in the slot, and instead of ripping it on goal, he ended up deferring to pass it to DeBrusque in the back door. That was like the only 
bad play, quote unquote, that I thought that he had. All the other plays were a little bit more passive. He wasn't really shooting much, but I was actually really okay with his defensive game. So I wasn't really thinking of him in a negative light after the game. But now I wanted to turn your attention to some of the other conversations that were popping up here. This is what Donnie and Dolly went out there and said before game one of the season. No more excuses. You have to be a difference maker. If Elias Pedersen is not a difference maker, the Vancouver Canucks are in trouble. This, of course, was before the first game. Hot take by Brando. Elias Pettersson is traded if he doesn't take over that number one center spot emphatically, leaving no doubt. Canucks management has shown to not hold on to players if it doesn't work. Another reply says, I think he had a no move for five years. It doesn't kick in until next season, though. That was a calculated move by management. Furthermore, there was another thought that I wanted to go out there and bring up here. This was on the Canucks overreaction Reddit thread. Name your biggest overreaction based on last night's game. Mine is that Elias Pettersson forgot how to play hockey. Now, it's in the name overreaction thread. This is not going to be purely rationalized takes here. The point of this is to be outlandish and crazy, but you did have some replies saying, hey, Elias Pettersson could be the worst 100-point player of all time. A massive overstatement. It comes with the territory of these kinds of overreactionary discussions, right? There's a reply thread here saying, no, Nugent Hopkins actually might be the actual worst 100-point player ever to play. But there is another thread here that I wanted to dive into. Someone said that Elias Pettersson won't finish his contract here. A reply says, man, I love Petey, but he is not doing himself any favors, and with our fan base, I can actually see he gets traded. If Luongo got traded, never say never, and Luongo has done more for the Canucks than Petey has so far. The crazy thing is, he looked good in the first period and, like the rest of the team, crap the rest of the game. The problem is he finished the night with the fourth worst Corsi 4. Even if he wasn't the highest paid player, he needs to be better. Now that he is the highest paid player, well... And then another one of the replies says, To be honest, I'd put more of that in the Sprong experiment not doing great, but personally, I never expected Sprong to be a top six guy. And just to give myself a little bit of slack, let's go out there and read one of the extra thoughts here in the comments. In all fairness, Elias Pettersson was pretty good defensively in that Calgary game. He can absolutely contribute more, but last night's loss was more about us letting off the gas rather than star players not producing. I'll agree with that. We scored five against the Flames. That should be enough for a win. Instead, we completely fell asleep. She lobs let in some softies. The four check was non-existent. They were losing almost every battle in the neutral zone. There were far more glaring problems than Pedersen. And so, with this all in mind, people were also talking about the Corsi representations of Pedersen with Sprong and without Sprong, and here it is right here. I mean, Pedersen looked good without Sprong on his wing. With Sprong, he looked pretty bad. Just numbers-wise, statistically-wise, shout out over to Chester Meng from the Wolf of Wall Street who tweeted this out. Pedersen had a 31.35 expected goals for percentage with Daniel Sprong. He had a 59.3% expected goals for percentage with Sprong away from him. So that kind of goes to show you that Sprong might have had an impact on that, but of course, Pedersen's an $11 million player. He should be able to produce. And Sprong scored a goal! Like, what the hell? There are many ways you can spin that conversation into a narrative that says that PD is underperforming, and while I will say that I did think he actually looked pretty good defensively, I will stand by the assessment that says that the team played poorly, and Elias Pettersson wasn't the reason they ended up losing. It's a combination of many things. Sure, you want to see Petey produce more. You want to see him shoot more. But him not shooting is not going to lose the Canucks a game on its own. You get what I'm saying? So, we'll see what happens later today. The Vancouver Canucks play off against the Flyers. It is Alex Edler Day. Oddly enough, funny to see that go down. We always love to give shout-outs to the Eagle for his long-tenured time in the NHL. Did you know that he was 10th all-time in shot blocks in the league? That's crazy. Like, what a weird stat to be top 10 in the NHL for. But either way, I will be watching this game against the Philadelphia Flyers, partly because I want to see the Canucks and partly because I want to see Matvey Mishkov do his thing. But also, we will make a post-game video about that afterwards. I do have volleyball later tonight, so I might have to rush things over to the community center once everything is said and done. But 
Canucks content, baby. I'm now back home, and I'm not in the hotel room in Vegas, so I actually do have the opportunity to watch these games as they happen. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Vancouver Canucks Elias Pettersson conversation, and whether or not you actually do think this is a reason to panic. I hope you enjoyed this British Astros 99, and bye.